First, just want to uh, say thank you to, uh, to our fan base. Um, you know, first time we've gone undefeated at home as a program in, in quite a while. Um, their energy, uh, the way that they've supported us, the way that they've showed up every week has been a huge part of, of our success as a program here at home. And, and uh, our players, our staff, myself, absolutely love seeing them. Uh, you guys have heard me say ball walks the most special thing and, and most unique thing in college sports. I, I truly believe that. And uh, obviously, uh, when Neyland is rocking, it's uh, unsurpassed by anybody. It, uh, I appreciate what they've done this year. And, and uh, hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll see them travel extremely well as we go to South Carolina uh, next week. Expect that. Uh, I want to thank our, our seniors, our, their families. Uh, just what they've meant to this program is, is we, uh, you know, since I've gotten here, just try to put it back on, on uh, a solid foundation. And, and those guys, um, what they've been through, uh, they're the guys that chose to stay through uh, uncertainty. Uh, they bought in, uh, jumped into the deep end with me. They've competed, they've grown. Uh, we've been connected in, in a, a really unique way, just as this thing has grown uh, pretty quickly. And, and uh, can't say thank you to them uh, enough, uh, not just what they do on the field, but who they are and how they, they go about their business every day. So with that, I'll open it up. Adam and David Pascal. Josh, uh, broke the school record in yards tonight. I, I know you guys wanted to win the game, but there seemed like there was a statement even beyond the victory. How intentional was that statement? Um, the, the, the statement for us is that we're a good football team playing good, good football. Um, what the score board ultimately ends up being um, and what you know, people down the line may judge us for, um, we're, we're out of control of, of some of those things. Um, there were a lot of things that were, were good in the first half. There were some things that weren't offensively, all three phases. Um, we can still, our best football is still out in front of us. Um, I am proud of, of the fight, the competition, the ability to reset. Uh, second half, the way our guys went out and competed in, in all three phases. Um, you know, it, uh, it was a good win. Josh, this was a 28-24 game nearing the midway mark of the third quarter. What kind of change? Their quarterback runs have kind of hurt you, but it looked like you flipped the switch in every phase. Yeah, uh, there's some things that they've done. I mean, you look at them defensively, what they've done here uh, throughout the course of the season. That's a, that's a really good defense, you know, one of the top ones in, in this conference. Um, there's some things that they did uh, that hurt us. There's some things that we did, too. Uh, on the offensive side of the football, <laughs> the quarterback run in the first half, um, you know, changed – the dynamics of the game. There's some things that we did. I mean, you look at the two-minute drive that we had. We're not able to uh, to go score. We're on the plus 30 or whatever it was, and you know they hit one play and uh, get three plays or three points out of it. So um, <clears throat> we weren't as clean as we could be in the first half. Our guys, you know, don't blink and and uh, came back and played. Uh, I'm proud of that part of it in particular. Patrick. Coach, uh, third quarter, Dylan Sims came in, had a couple big runs, kind of got you guys going on the ground. What, what is he, kind of his process of getting on the field, getting playing time, and, and what do you see from him today? Yeah, I had planned on playing him here uh, the last couple of weeks, um, in some respects more than he's gotten opportunities to. Uh, he's a young guy that continues to get better, that we have trust in, uh, that uh, I think has got really good vision and, and uh, ability to press holes. Uh, deliver blocks and, and get to open space. And, and uh, he was dynamic with the, the ball in his hands today. He, he, uh, he played really good football. Joe, Josh, I just wanted to ask you about, in particular, uh, Latrell Bumpus and what he's meant to, to this program. Man, he, he's been through the, all the adversity uh, here at Tennessee during his, uh, his tenure, <coughs> his career plus all the injuries that he's been through. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if there's anybody that, uh, that cares about the power T, the players in the locker room more than he does. That's one of the most selfless people that I've ever been around. Uh, all he does is come, come to work, uh, got a great family. That guy's going to be ultra successful uh, whenever his playing day is done. Um, can be ultra successful in whatever he chooses to do. Cedar went through three game, didn't dress a lot though. What kind of went into that decision? And then you talk about the family type stuff. You see Princeton, he brings his daughter down on the field there at the end of the game, kind of soaking up last game type stuff. Um, when you see that as a dad, what's that mean? 
Okay, I might have to ask you to repeat your one of the questions here at some point, but the original question was what was it that said? Uh, said could have played in this one, just everything that's going on, it has nothing to do with uh, the ankle. Um, it uh, He'll be ready to go next week and, and uh, just you know, as a program and talking with him after warm-ups, it just felt like uh, probably best to, to sit this one out. Um, Princeton fan, family, <clears throat> I mean, you guys see it as we come down. I, I think it's really cool just where our families sit. Um, you know, our players get a chance to, to see them as they're running out, as they're warming up. Um, when they come back in, um, you can tell that, you know, wives, kids, players, families, we, we try to build a, a program where everybody's connected and, and a true family. And, and uh, Princeton fan, you know, <laughs> little one, uh, being able to spend time with the dad and, and uh, be on the field. And uh, we got multiple guys uh, that are like that. And uh, those are rare, unique opportunities. You guys see me. I mean, we arrive to the stadium. I meet uh, a bunch of recruits. I take a five-minute pause, and, and all most of our coaches do, but I play catch with my kid, and, and uh, those are moments that, as a dad, you're going to cherish. As a kid, I know, having been on the other side of that, that, uh, that mean the world, and, and uh, at the end of the day, those are the things that spur you on to, to do things the right way and uh, continue to fight to, to get better. Jamie and Patrick, Joshua Missouri did cut it to 28-24. To what was the, the move on the sideline? Um, pretty calm. Um, certainly, uh, you know, the, the guys on the sideline, they, they don't panic. Uh, a week ago, <clears throat> I don't think we settled into the game and did the ordinary, and that starts with me and our assistant coaches and, and our players together. Um, these guys have been resilient. You guys heard me say in the beginning of the week that um, I think I was asked the question, how do, how do I think these guys are going to respond? You know, we didn't just land at this spot, you know, like these guys have worked and earned it and uh, their character and, uh, you know, who they are has been revealed every day along, along the way. That's how we've gotten here. And, um, you know, good teams don't play perfect, but they do compete in a really positive way and they reset and, and then our guys did that today. Without Cedric uh, Brew stepped up, had over 100 yards. What do you think he brought to the game in, in this matchup with the Missouri's defense? Yeah, uh, consistency, uh, playmaking ability, made some tight catches, uh, worked over the middle of the football field extremely well. Um, you know, had some big plays, had third down conversions. Um, you know, the way they matched things out was uh, it was unique at times, and, and uh, you know, trying to find the right matchups to, to play against. Um, you know, loaded box early in the first quarter, made it tough to, to run the football just right out the gate. And <clears throat> I thought, you know, the, the pitch and catch was important in the early part of the game. West and Josh, that, that touchdown played out mm -hmm. high there, midway through the third quarter. How long had that one been in the back, po back pocket? It looked like it was schemed up perfectly. Yeah, it's been in my back pocket for a while. Uh, it's been run different places. Um, and, uh, Brought it out this week. Just felt like we'd have an opportunity to, to sneak him out. Um, but uh, staff did a great job of, you know, coming back to that one. And, and uh, it was timely. They cut it to, I don't know, three or four at that point, And it was a big time answer. Josh, what did you see from the defense making adjustments after it became a 28-24 game? What changed from that point defensively? For us, <clears throat> man, it, it wasn't a whole lot of scheme. You know what I mean? Like, for us, we just settled in and played better football. Um, Quarterback run, we lost contain on them. Uh, we didn't uh, handle uh, the interior uh, run uh, off of some of our twist games. <clears throat> we didn't match out some of their stacks, uh, uh, you know, formations uh, the right way. And um, at the end of it, we settled in and made some some plays that were routine routine plays, doing the ordinary things at a really high level. What led to some of those big quarterback runs early? Yeah, like, like I just said, um, you know, out on the outside, we lost contain uh, through the middle. Um, you know, us not playing it off of our, our twist games uh, to handle uh, some of the quarterback run. Frank, <coughs> uh, back here. Coach, Toby Wilson gets to go in and make that final PAT, and he got those chances uh, against UT Martin, too. But what's it like to see a guy like that get that moment? Yeah, Toby, uh, <clears throat> a year ago, uh, gets an opportunity because Paxton's nicked up, and he played a ton of football and did a heck of a job as our, our kickoff guy. Um, <clears throat> you know, this year doesn't get those same opportunities. 
there's not a better person <laughs> inside of our program. Um, comes to work, competes every day, cares about the power team and his teammates. Um, when you, you have an opportunity where the scoreboard is the way it is to, to get the next guy in, uh, those are awesome opportunities to let them go play. And, and those are big. Those are memories for, for those guys. And, and uh, I think it's important to let those guys play, uh, play football when they get a chance. Regarding the quarterback runs, did you make <coughs> adjustments there, or did you just execute better? Better execution uh, on the back end of it. All right. Yeah. Coach, what did you see from Hendon, not just today, but the week leading up, uh, to have his bounce back from last week? <clears throat> uh, I think uh, his energy, uh, his ability to speak to his teammates, you know, throughout the course of the week, but early in the week, is, is a part of our guys <clears throat> handling it and responding the right way. You guys have heard me say it. Um, you know, great teams have great leadership from within uh, in the locker room, and and uh, we have really strong leadership. Hendon uh, being as strong as anybody, and and uh, you know he affects our program in such a positive way. And uh, being able to reset from last week, uh, he's a huge part of that. Other questions okay. on Hendon? His he obviously got the, the biggest cheer during senior day. I know it was a long time ago for you, but uh, just. That moment for him and, and hearing the crowd appreciate him, what was it like for, for you? Long time ago, like him walking through the tee. Uh, he played a whole football game. You know, that yeah. Been a while. <clears throat> uh, I remember uh, a lot of those moments for a lot of those guys coming through that tee, and, and uh, I'm super grateful, thankful, appreciative of, of what they've meant to, to us and to me. Um, we're not here without those guys and, and what they've done. Hand in, um, man, like. Really powerful, like powerful story, right? Just <clears throat> you know, transfer in didn't go right at the first stop. Um, young man that doesn't get named the starter continues to pour into his teammates. Like, what a great lesson for everybody inside of our locker room. Becomes the guy, continues to grow, competes every day, shows up, works, becomes a great leader. Like, <clears throat> he's been it. Like, I mean, just. Uh, he'll be one of the greats, you know, uh, however it ends out. Yeah, like he'll be one of the greats here. And um, pretty cool story, you know, and, and the perseverance that it takes to, to fight and go through that as a player. It's, uh, it's a hard thing to do and um, doesn't go unnoticed, certainly, that whole road by me. Wes? Yes, there was that moment there, I guess, in the late in the second quarter when Jalen dropped a couple of balls in a row. Is he the guy that – did you have to say something to you after something like that or pat him on the back, or is he just let him be? Kind of uh, I mean, you end up coming into halftime, you know what I mean? And so Coach Pope got with him. I said something to him, but he's played enough football and, and played at high enough level that he's supremely confident and, and uh, went out there and played well in the second half. Last one in the back. Uh, just a funnel on Josh. Was there any thoughts of uh, going up with Hendon up top and directing the band as well? <laughs> I had my band moment. Uh, I'm gonna let him ha have that one. It, uh, I do remember Peyton uh, being up on that ladder and, and doing it. Uh, it's a pretty cool moment, uh, one that uh, that he'll remember forever. All right, thank you. We'll have players here shortly. <clears throat>